greatest players. He's on the Furman sidelines. Um, it's I mean, the two schools are close. These are two fine academic institutions. This should be a great game. Our officials, Ryan Christian, Jason Page, Michael Terry. Furman wins the tip, and we are underway here in Spartanburg. Furman going left to right, dressed in their purple uniforms with the always undecipherable black numerals. Wofford in their faux whites with the black and gold trim. I had to get that in there. Let's see what the Paladins do on their first possession. Bothwell, who historically doesn't play all that well against Wofford, even though he had a game winner at Greenville a couple of years ago. Slauson is blocked by Mack. They get it back out. Hunter's three at the shot clock buzzer is good. How's that for a start? That's the guy that if you're a Wofford fan, you better be worried about. Alex Hunter made the decision to come back for a fifth year at Furman. Um, one of the better point guards in the league and was open there because of a play that broke down. Now, this is what I think you're going to see on the offensive end all night. I think Wofford's going to try to exploit some things in the paint with B.J. Mack. Mack as Slauson should be a good one. B.J.'s turnaround doesn't go. Tipped back to Slauson, and the Paladins will bring it back up. Hunter decided to, as he said, come back for a fifth year. Really just adds so much consistency to that Paladin squad. Slauson, the main man on the inside this season, as Bopwell tries to work on Safford, who's a good defender. Safford pins him underneath the backboard, forces a miss on the underside of the rim. Good D by Safford. Here comes Larson for Wofford. It's one of those games where everybody's already got their throats and their their hearts in their throats, and we're only have only played a minute and a half. There's an there's an Asheville-like feel to this, even yeah. though we're only in mid-January. Isaiah Bigelow. He's been hot as of late as well. Now Mack outside between the circles. Safford free and clear. The three, a little bit long. No competition for the rebound. Garrison has it for the Paladins. Not quite two minutes in. Furman's got the only points as they have the ball, the three-point lead. Slauson faked the three. Mack didn't go for it. Bothwell will take that left-handed three. That rims out. Rebound Mack. Mike Bothwell is a guy who is immensely talented, but he has struggled against Wofford in his career. And uh, he's missed two shots already tonight. A little lay-in that was not uh, easy, and uh, and then that three. Only had two points in the Wofford win at Furman last year and 12 in the game here at Spartanburg. Wow. Oh, waited out. Bigelow's shot went halfway down, came back out, and Wofford still hasn't gotten a point yet. Getting good looks. Just got to figure out a way to get him to go. Slauson. Looking outside, Garrison, that's off the back iron, offensive rebound. Good work by Foster. Garrison, a no-look pass, almost threw it into the backcourt, but Slauson saved it for Bothwell. Ten on the shot clock, but Slauson's going to try to back in Klesman. Go cross-court, it was knocked down by Mack. Scramble for it, shot clock's running down, Garrison, good pass to Bothwell, good look, and he missed it. Tap back out, and Furman will get another try. Move it around, Hunter will launch the three, and that's no good, and another rebound, this time Garrison. Bothwell, one of these gotta go in, and it does. You can't give any team, much less a good team like Furman, four or five tries on the one end. Yeah, uh, McCracken Junior High, McCracken Middle School will make you pay if they get that many offensive rebounds. It's just, some of them were funky caroms that just, they just got them, and give Furman credit. They uh, knocked down the shot, Mike Bothwell did. Mack now outside the arc. Mack and Slauson should be a really good battle to watch. Slauson made him pick up the dribble. Now, Safford gets bumped on the baseline, and he took a knee right to the thigh. I think he's going to be okay. They will call that foul on Marcus Foster. First on Foster, first on the Paladins. Quick substitution for Wofford as Max Klesman comes out. Austin Patterson in. So the freshman Patterson, who did play half a season last year, rolled to Wofford early. A couple of, couple of substitutions for Furman as well. Tyrese Huey is in. I think I saw Joe Anderson has checked in. Yep, he's in as well. Larson at the elbow, passes out to Patterson. He's a shooter. And the first points go to Austin Patterson at six to three. That's why he came in. <laughs> Little, That's just good coaching right there. offense for Wofford. <laughs> Austin Patterson's been shooting it really well. Slauson holding. 
Mack wants to let him shoot from the outside. Furman's interior passing has been pretty sharp thus far. And then Slauson, they play inside out. Slauson nails the three. If he hits that shot, it's going to be a long night for the Terriers. 9-3 Paladins. Furman is 3 of 7 behind the arc. They've already attempted 9 shots thanks to all those offensive rebounds. Lawson draws a double team. Patterson picks up without, didn't pick up a dribble, it's stolen by Anderson. Two on one, back to Anderson, nope, offensive foul. Larson draws the charge as Huey was a little bit out of control. Frantic start here in Sparkburg. The Paladins have had the hot hand early, but Ryan Larson gives the ball back to Wofford. 9-3, Furman. Furman Paladins lead Wofford 9-3. We talked earlier about this very, very tight coaching tree that both Nico Medved, Mike Young, and some others have, have sprouted over Greenville and Spartanburg. Yeah, Nico Medved did a great job at Furman, and Bob Ritchie became the uh, head coach when, when Medved left to go to Drake. He's now at Colorado State, and then... Uh, as Bob Ritchie came to Furman, Wofford uh, got Jay McCauley to come over here as an assistant. And when Jay McCauley was named head coach, he hired Dwight Perry away from Furman. So just a, a lot of uh, these staffs know each other very well. Let's put it that way. And, and the loss in all that is Tim Johnson having uh, played here at Wofford and coached here at Wofford. Paladin showing a little bit of token pressure. That's something that Greensboro did to great effect in this. Look at the pass, though, from Mack to Safford for two. And that is something you, uh, Furman's going to do. They'll, they'll put some pressure on you. They probably press as much as anybody other than UNCG, and it's to slow you down, try to get them themselves in the situations they want to be in. Garrison, the D2 transfer, facilitates their offense. Anderson hits a three, and Furman is finding the range. They are four for ten now from the field, but about five of those attempts came on one possession. And they've hit four of eight threes. Four different players have made a three for the Paladins. Saffron looking to penetrate. Now back. Double teamed. Back out. They'll work it around. Nope. Deflected by Anderson. Good defense. Good hands. Wofford's got a reset with 10 on the shot clock. Mack, five to shoot. Tough place to see the clock from. I'm not sure he does. And he doesn't get it off anyway, and it's stripped away by Furman. That's a solid, solid defensive possession by the Paladins. Joe Anderson giving Furman a lift on the defensive end and the offensive end. He got a steal on a possession earlier, deflected a pass there, doing some nice things for the Paladins. Anderson, a six-foot sophomore out of, some people say Maryville. It's Maryville, Tennessee. Got to say it really fast. Not a big kid, six, nice. six foot 170. He's got the ball right now, but man, he shows some quickness, especially on the defensive end. He's got some good flow in the hair department, too. <sighs> you see him there dribbling out, hounded by Corey Tripp, who just checked in for Wofford, as did Sam Godwin. Plusman's back in for Wofford as well. Both these teams trying to go a little bit deeper into the roster than they have been known to in the past. As Huey is shot fake and lays it in, can't get the roll in. Safford and Huey battle for it. I think that's going to be a held ball. It will indeed, and it should go to the Terriers. Watch another look at it. It's a nice move, but no finish. And then Safford kind of had the ball at his fingertips over his head. That's why you do that tennis ball drill and strengthen those fingers, try to hold on to the ball like that. Corey Tripp going up against Alex Hunter. That's a freshman against a fifth-year guy. Klesman coming off that big night in Cullowee. Another big night here on Wednesday. Safford drives and gets the roll. Morgan Safford, something about Furman, brings out the best in him, and then a near steal by Klesman, but he stepped on the sideline. We had a good view of that. Yeah, literally right in front of us. J.P. Pegues checks in. Freshman out of Nashville had a huge game against Western Carolina Wednesday night over in Greenville. 18, also, yeah, 18 points on six threes, and he hadn't scored since December 7th. Broke out in a big way. He's got the ball now up top right in front of the Wofford bench. Klesman hounding him. Now Slauson. He will try to back in whoever's guarding him for Wofford. Godwin does a good job staying in front of him. Still 10 to shoot for Furman. Hunter, Slauson, take it to the paint over Godwin. Godwin affects that shot, and Bigelow was fouled. They got Garrett Heen with a push off. Yeah, he, a lot of contact there with Isaiah Bigelow, who was in position to grab that rebound. Watch Godwin stay within himself right here to affect that shot. 
Yeah, what Sam Godwin did there was he went straight up and down, playing a verticality. 12-7, Furman leads it, nearing 13 minutes to go. First half here in Spartanburg. Both these teams in the mix. The upper third of the SoCon standings. Chattanooga won today, so everybody's still chasing the box. Klesman off the screen, a little bit long. Offensive board, Godwin, he'll go up with the left hand. Get the roll. Hung on the rim for a second. Sam Godwin, second team back after missing a couple of games with an ankle injury. Terriers within three. I think that's an area where Furman can be had with Wofford, and that's offensive rebounding. We've already seen the Paladins doing a nice job. Back great, door cut, great, great feed. pass. Heen to Pegues for two. That was a beautiful pass by Garrett Heen. There was a small window to fit that ball in. Wofford wasn't exactly fooled by it. Play just too good. Godwin, what can he do? As Slauson pokes it free. Steal. Paladins have it. Wofford's taking care of the ball better. Oh, my goodness. Jason Slauson, Jalen Slauson from nowhere throws it down. Nobody, nobody stopped the ball. He made the steal, then got out running, and that was impressive by Jalen Slauson. Senior out of Somerville and Pinewood Prep. Trip comes back and Slauson takes care of that. Knocked it out of bounds. It's the Jalen Slauson show right now for the Furman Paladins. Take another look at this one. He took off and took flight. And Furman leads it 16-9. Furman Paladins looking for their first win here in Spartanburg since an overtime win in 2011. And Jalen Slauson, wow. Every time we look at that, Tom, it looks more impressive. It, it is, it's very impressive. I thought he jumped way too soon and too far out, but it shows you what I know. And the athleticism he showed there, that's one of those things. I mean, that's got to be featured on all your nightly recaps. He's got five already in that block. The only thing I don't like is he blocked it out of bounds, which means Wofford keeps possession of the ball. Terriers to Patterson on the inbound play. He comes out firing, rims out. Mac goes up for the offensive rebound, shot fake, and he gets hammered by Slauson. Got Slauson back up in the air, and B.J. Mack will go to the line where he's been very, very good. Another look at Mack really taking it over the back. Lawson and got the big man up in the air. B.J. Mack, 25 points against the Citadel Wednesday. He's averaging nearly 20 points a game in Southern Conference play. He's second in the conference in field goal percentage. And with Wofford, still looking for more inside help after the loss of Messiah Jones for the season. They have really been riding number 33. And you forget, they lost Messiah Jones. Sam Godwin's about 75%. That's what the coaches told me before the game as B.J. Mack knocks down the second. And then Terriers are also still without Luke Turner tonight, who is still in the health and safety protocol. He's a guy that scored a week ago today 20 points and 10 rebounds in Cullowee for Wofford. Bourbon with a ball, five-point leads. Hunter looks inside, now finds Bothwell. Excuse me. Foster. Slauson. Offer trying to deny those handoff passes. Bothwell, does he see the shot clock? I don't know if he got that one off. They say he did. Bigelow comes back to the defensive board. He's been a rebounding machine lately for the Terriers. Uh, had 14 Wednesday night against the Citadel. Safford, Klesman. Offer will try to be patient on offense. Terriers been shooting three very good lately. Both these teams have really been on fire the last three or four games from three-point range. Bump on Safford. I think they're going to get Bothwell. Right as Safford was delivering the, the pass. Oh, nope. they get Slauson. Slauson. Wow. That's two on Jalen Slauson. And very quickly, Tyrese Huey comes in for him. Yeah, he got him on the arm when he reached in. You can see it right there. Good work by the camera crew here. That's an easy call for the officials to make. And... Bob Ritchie talking to Jalen. I think he's trying to be Back careful. to the rack for two. You do that, you get the full name treatment. That was Brian James Mack on that dunk. Great look by Larson. 
That was about the third option on the inbound play, and it was open. Terriers are within three. Yeah, this is as close as Wofford's been in some time. Bothwell, baseline, turned back by Bigelow. Garrison's open. That one was halfway down. Rebound, Bigelow. Don't have to hit a grand slam right now if you're Wofford. Just continue to run your stuff. Isaiah gets in, slashes to the hoop. Saffords follow with block, but a foul. Morgan Safford already, you can tell how active he is on the offensive end. Tyrese That's Huey just picked Huey. up his second, yeah. That means Heen's going to have to play. Bob Ritchie's uh, questioning, I would say, the efficacy of some of these calls early on. The two on Slauson have been legit. Um, that one, I, I, I mean, there's so much traffic. It, it, there's probably a foul somewhere in there. Morgan Safford misses the first free throw. 60% free throw shooter, as you said, Tom Garrett Heen. Garrett Heen's interesting because as a freshman, as you see Bob Ritchie simmering a little bit in front of the Furman bench. Two missed free throws by Safford. I was talking about Garrett Heen, who was their leading bench scorer and rebounder last year as a freshman, and his numbers way down this year. Wofford with another deflection, couldn't get the steal. Hunter's gonna hold and settle things down a bit. Furman really looking for that backdoor cut, you can see. Foster comes up firing. His three is long, another long rebound, but this time, Wofford gets to it first. Yeah, Bigelow tracked that one down. As Furman had all those offensive rebounds earlier. Since then, Wofford has started to really dominate the glass. Larson, his three is good. Ryan Larson doesn't shoot it all that much, but when he does, he's very efficient, and we're tied. 7-0 run for the Terriers. Furman's gone scoreless for two and a half minutes. They Harrison, can do that. Yeah. They're just throwing up some outside shots, but they're falling. Marcus Foster with the tray. Furman lead right back up to three. Paladins needed that one to kind of quell this Terrier crowd. Keep in mind, Furman beat 21 threes in that win over Western Carolina. Second time this season they've hit more than 20 triples in a game. Wofford's been shooting the three very well lately. They were over 50% the last three games from outside. Back. Dribbling into the corner. He's going to work on Heen. Heen pokes it loose. Five. PJ's going to have to get a shot off. He goes underneath and lays it in right at the shot clock buzzer. How's that for some patience by B.J. Mack? I don't know that Garrett Heen can guard B.J. Mack. That, that's maybe something that Furman has some issues with. 1918 Paladins. Mack already has six. Bothwell, Safford. On the defense, Bothwell's got to get it back out. Heen's three off the back of the iron. Larson tried to gather it in. He did, and that was good hustle by Marcus Foster, who forced the ball off of Larson. And it'll belong to Furman. The geese and Anderson check in for Furman. Take Garrison a look at and uh, Hunter take a seat. Larson goes, uh, actually, he just kind of lost it himself. Couldn't gather it in. So Furman will inbound underneath the Terrier basket. They're gonna get it all the way back out to Foster and they'll set things up. Bothwell and Safford, that's gonna be a great battle. Safford really prides himself on his deed. Bothwell could be a human bucket when he gets things going. Safford with the deflection. Steal. Safford rips it loose and they're gonna have a foul on Bothwell. Wofford bench. Gives Morgan Safford a hero's welcome home. 7.53 to go. First half. It's Furman 19 and Wofford 18. Jim Noble, Tom Henson with you here in Spartanburg. Furman has a one-point lead. Wofford's going to be going to the free throw line, however. Furman's committed seven fouls, so Wofford's in the bonus. The Wofford Terriers have not been called for one foul yet tonight. Cue the conspiracy theorists. <laughs> but usually, Tommy, you almost never see one team in the bonus, the other team with a big zero up there under team fouls. And, and if, I'm sure Bob Ritchie is already working the officials and pointing that out. And so, you know, 
expect a few ticky-tack calls to come back and be called on Wofford on this other end to try to even things out. But if Wofford doesn't start making their free throws, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yes, yeah, Safford's now 0 for 3 after missing the front end of the 1-1. One and one. So Furman has the ball and that one-point lead. E.G. Mack has six points, two assists for Wofford. Jalen Slauson, five for the Paladins. Battle for the basketball. Furman goes cross court. Good ball movement. Bothwell's going to put the ball on the floor, or will he? Godwin gets there. They collapse and force a turnover. Wofford's got numbers. Patterson gets it to Klesmit, and that pass zings by Godwin. I think Sam was trying to set position, wasn't looking for the basketball. And turnover Terriers, that is their fourth of the first half to three for Furman. Both teams distributing the ball very well. Five assists for Wofford, six for Furman. Huey comes in. Also, Hunter back in. Hunter's the guy. I, I, if I was coaching them, he wouldn't leave the floor unless he just had to have oxygen. I love the way he plays. Huey playing with two fouls. Jalen Slauson is on the bench right now for Furman with two fouls. Anderson, who gave Furman a list early in the half. So there's a ticky tack. It's fouled. Max Klesman called for his first personal first team foul on Wofford. Refs are human. They'll, they'll, they'll hear it from a coach and look up at the scoreboard. Those things usually tend to even out, out of the court over the course of the game. We'll see if they will. Furman basketball. And then bounce to Hunter. He'll dribble back out. Husband went for the steal, didn't get it. Anderson tried to penetrate. Now he'll dish. And a three. That's a sweet-looking delivery by J.P. Pegues. He's trying to pick up where he left off Wednesday against Western Carolina. And just like that, Furman's back up by four. Yeah, and he's got five. I think he's been a nice little shot in the arm for him. If you're Wofford, you're going to start thinking, you know what? We've done nothing to, to make this a closer game or take the lead with Jalen Slauson on the bench with two fouls. And now he's getting ready to check back in with those two fouls. Bigelow is going to put it on the floor and get bumped. That's going to be on Huey. That should be three. And it is. So Tyrese Huey. Third personal foul, and he makes a beeline for the Paladin bench. Here comes Jason Slauson. Jalen Slauson. Why well, keep doing that? Jalen Slauson. Back on the floor with two personals. Slauson's a guy that probably can play with two fouls. He's a veteran. Um, I don't know that. I don't know that there's much of a risk putting him back on there, on the floor. Bigelow hits the front end. He'll get one more. Isaiah Bigelow missed all of last year after tearing an ACL, a knee injury at preseason practice. He and he his was... buddy Messiah Jones just can't figure out how to play a year together. Both red-shirted, and then Isaiah missed all of last year, and as you said earlier, Messiah Jones is missing all of this year. Two for two for Bigelow. wofford has been good shooting at free throws, except for Morgan Safford. 22-20, <laughs> Furman leading, 6.25 to go, first half. Capacity crowd here at Jerry Richardson Indoor Stadium. Slauson thought about a three. Now he'll put the ball on the floor. Foul by Godwin and converts. He'll go to the line. I don't know that Sam Godwin can guard Jalen Slauson. Another look here. You know, when, when Noah Gurley transferred to the University of Alabama, everybody's wondering what is what is Furman gonna do on the outside uh, on the inside? They're not saying that anymore. Slauson. He's had four 20-plus point games. He only had three points against Western Carolina Wednesday as he completes the three-point play. But he did so many other things. He had nine rebounds. He had six assists. He just he didn't worry when the offense wasn't going through him. He is a all-Southern Conference performer. First team in my book. Offered with the ball, trailing by five. Max back in there. He's got Heen on him. Now, Klesmet. They haven't really got Max going as of yet. Bigelow, quick pass to back, who's got position on the block. Good defense by Heen. BJ's going to flip up the left. He won't go. Gets his own board. Double move, lays it back in. Too easy for BJ Mack. I think he's a no doubt first teamer. Yeah. Oh, Sokon, the, the junior from Charlotte. You notice they didn't have Slauson on Mack there, and that's because they don't want him to risk picking up that third. So it's Heen and Bigelow matched up with each other. Slauson takes Mack outside and buries a three. 
Jalen Sawson looks at the bench, says something to the effect of he can't guard me. Furman's back up by six. Yeah, back to where we started, and that was a 6-0 Furman advantage. Klesman, quick pass inside, it's knocked away. That's good defense by Heen. Yeah, Garrett Heen with the quick hands. Pegues out, Heen out for Furman. Foster back in, Garrison back in for Wofford. Corey Tripp is in as Ryan Larson gets a rest. Kind of the big complaint of Furman fans over the past two years is the Paladins only used to go seven, maybe eight deep and be gassed by tournament time. Bigelow will go to throw it down, and I think that was Hunter who may have gotten the yeah, ball on the way up. And then Hunter on the other end leaves the three short. I know Alex Hunter didn't block Bigelow at the apex. Got the ball going up. I think he got it as he was going to the rim. Exactly right. Heck of a defensive play by Alex Hunter. Patterson, Furman guarding the perimeter way out there, and Patterson is fouled on his way to the hole. Hunter went for the reach in, got some arm. First on Hunter. That's the ninth team foul. Yeah, you're right. Hunter went up there and knocked the ball out of Bigelow's hands as he was kind of cocking back, and that would have been a thunderous dunk had Hunter not stepped in there. Austin Patterson goes to the line. The only part of Patterson's game has been free throw shooting that hasn't really come around. He's a 59% free throw shooter. A lot of X's in my notebook right yeah, now. Yeah, Wofford's now throws. got him at four for eight from free throw land. Anderson's three, high arching, didn't go. Worked against the backboard of the glass, and Mack pulls the rebound down. Big man will bring it up. 4.15 to play. Wofford trailing Furman, 28-22. Mack right now in this offense, kind of out operating as a point forward. Now he'll get the return pass. Sausage gave him a little room there. He's going to try to take it right to him and draw a foul. No call, and BG leads it in. Bob Ritchie has his hands in the air. Wanted a foul, didn't get it. It's my uh, favorite thing. I, I, officials have got it. Just don't call charges or blocks. Just let them play through it. You'll get it out of the game. Now back at the other end. Slauson's three drifted off to the left. Another big board by Isaiah Bigelow. He's up to seven rebounds. His first half's the last three or four games have been incredible. Now the other end. The three won't go. Wofford's had some good looks and haven't fallen as Garrison brings it down. Anderson tipped by Patterson. Gets it to Slauson. I think they just need to settle down a little bit right here, Furman does. Wofford, and both teams really contesting everything. Nice pass inside. And then Slauson is fouled by Mack. Crowd thought it was all ball. The referees say no. We've got immediate timeout with 3.08 to go. Another look at it. Jalen Slauson will be going to the line when we come back. Furman's up by four. And welcome back to Spartanburg. 28-24, Furman leads Wofford, 3.08 to go. Half number one, Jim Noble, Tom Henson. Tom, it's kind of, it's got that feel of a, of a game that neither team is going to probably be able to land a knockout blow on the others. Just kind of, it's going to feel like it's that, that chippy back and forth probably all night long. Yeah, and, and if you're, you're Wofford, you start to try to wonder, you know, Slauson's only played 11 minutes, shade under 11, but he's got 11 points. Um, and he's kind of doing what he wants to do on the offensive end with four of seven shooting, two of three from behind the arc, one of one at the free throw line. But when he sat for so long because he picked up that second foul, Wofford didn't really make any noise. And uh, let's hope that doesn't come back to bite the Terriers if that's who you're rooting for. Slauson misses the first. He's a 73% free throw shooter. Hunter back in. I think Heen is waiting to come in for. Uh, must Somebody. be coming in for Slauson <laughs> since he's still sitting there. Wofford's got Klesmet, Mack, Safford, Bigelow, and Larson on the floor. Jalen Slauson hits one of two, so he leads all scorers with 12 right now. B.J. Mack, the only other player on the floor 
in double figures with 10 for Wofford. Both teams shooting about the same, 40% for Furman, 45 for Wofford. The difference in this game right now is Furman's made seven threes, Wofford's made two. Larson gets a screen from Safford as he brings it up. He is leading the Southern Conference in assist to turnover ratio. Larson doing a great job taking care of the basketball. There's Mack again, arm bar by Heen, trying to keep him out. Return pass from Bigelow. Nine to shoot. Bigelow's three. Long rebound, Hunter runs it down. Isaiah Bigelow is one for six from the floor in this first half. Hunter looking inside. Oh, he was open for a second and said it's a, <laughs> it's even better. It's a three off the fingertips of J.P. Pegues. He is loving life right now in that Furman lead. It's the largest they've had, uh, as largest they've had today. Eight points. I, I like what they're doing on the defensive end, and, and Wofford's playing into their hands right now, settling for threes. Wofford thought the big difference, leading 14 to eight points in the paint, but you're right, Tom, they, they've got to keep that up. Max got it in the free throw line. Going to try to take Heen one-on-one. Mid-range jumper a little bit long. Heen comes back and grabs the board. Paladins with a chance to get a double-digit lead here. Garrison trailing three. No good. Wofford hasn't scored in forever. It's a three-minute drought for the Terriers. Klesmet, he has not gotten on track. Bigelow. Yeah, Klesmet's only attempted one shot, and he's coming off a career high 27 points Wednesday. Give credit to, uh, oh, now they've got Piggies on him. Mack finds a cutting Larson. He's fouled. That could count. Nope, on the floor. Nope, waved it off. No NBA continuance here. Here's a good look at it, though, and you see the foul took right there, yeah, and then call. Larson went up. Good call. Yep, clearly on the floor. Now, in, in the NBA, absolutely. <laughs> it's Ryan Larson. The senior, fourth in the conference in assists per game, 4.1, two-time SOCON academic honor roll, by the way. Ryan wanted us to get in there. I'm just kidding. I just found it. He didn't say a word. <laughs> The thing Furman's throw. doing so well on the offensive end is helping their efficiency is they're sharing the basketball. They've got nine assists on 11 makes. Larson hits one out of two. Mack was going for the rebound. He stepped on the baseline. It'll be Furman basketball. Wofford now five of 10 at the free throw line. You know, they're normally a 75% free throw shooting team, which is above average. Right now, it's the difference in a, probably a four-point game and a seven-point game where, we at, where we're at. Can't complain about the ribs here at home. Larson went for the steal and absolutely got left in the dust by Hunter. Herman back up by nine. Under a minute to play. Off really, really needs a bucket here to feel a little bit better about themselves. Going to the locker room and Mack loses it, but it goes to Bigelow. One on two, rejected by Bothwell. Oh, hurry it up, pull up, three, good! What a sequence there for the Paladins. Mike Bothwell goes to the bench. The Paladins greet him, we'll keep it right here. Wofford calls a timeout with 38.4 to go. 12-point lead, and, and again, this is a case where individual Wofford players are trying to do too much. Bigelow tries to go up, and I think he's looking for a jam and uh, trying to excite the crowd. And the, the Paladins get a great play by Bothwell. They come down and they score. You see Furman in there. Total assist lead entering today. They led the country. I mean, no, no team playing college basketball has more assists. Yes. And they're doing it again tonight. Yeah, you're getting a great, great illustration of why that's the case right now. And, you know, it's funny. Whoppers, everything's been going Whoppers' way the, the last three games. Sanford, Western Carolina, Citadel, all 20-plus point margins. Wofford's been doing it with, with rebounding defense, and rebounds are about even tonight. They've been taking care of the basketball, and Furman's ramped up the defense. 
You know, it's just, I give credit to, to the Furman coaching staff. They have devised a defensive plan that has really taken Wofford out of their comfort zone here in the first half. And they've been, all season, have been one of the better defensive teams. Um, they've showed that this half. Wofford shooting 39%. And again, the Paladins have hit nine threes here in the first 20 minutes. Coming off 21 at home Wednesday night against Western Carolina. But a seven second differential between shot clock and game clock is Wofford has it in the front court. Mack trying to take Keen. Cross court pass. They work it around. Safford is going to put the ball on the floor and find BJ and lays it in. Not for a minute that the Keys might be able to block that from behind. Still a 10 point margin, and Furman will have one last shot here as we're under 10 to go in the half. Hunter, Mack on him. Finds Bothwell, you don't want to leave him open, but he left it short, and that will end half number one. But a pretty good half, Furman will take it. The Paladins will head to the locker room. They have held Wofford to 27 points in the first half, and Furman leads it by 10. Wins over Sanford, they really did a good job at ETSU doing it, but Furman has really had the upper hand all night tonight. Paladins going right to left here in the second half. They've got the ball to start things off. It'll be Hunter double teamed by Larson and Mack. Now Slauson has a step. Reached in, knocked away by Larson. Thought it went off of Slauson. It did not. It'll be Furman basketball. All yeah, teams with the same five starters they started the game with. Slauson playing with two fouls. And we've got a foul on the perimeter. We'll go on Morgan Safford. Got him with a hold there. I think it was Bothwell coming off the screen. That is his first. Of course, first of the half on Wofford. Inbound to Slauson. He's got position, but kicks out to Bothwell, who makes a move off Safford and lays it in. Shot fake, drove right by him. Furman has the first two points of half number two. And back to matching their largest lead of the night at 12. Wofford's 27 points in the first half. Their second lowest output of the year in the half. Richmond held them to 26 back on December 1st. Safford in the corner, looking inside, knocked away by Slauson. It'll stay with Wofford. Ellen Slauson, as you see his defense here, Father Tom played basketball at the Citadel. His cousin RJ played at South Carolina. Leads this team in rebounds, steals, assists, and blocks. Doing everything as a senior out of Somerville, South Carolina. Now Mack hands off to Larson. Garrison hounding him. Mack's got good position, goes the other way. <laughs> Slauson, Slauson went left, Mack went right. 14 points for B.J. Mack. Yes, you can feel sometimes which way they're leaning. Slauson hits the deck. He's going to be getting it called. Somebody for Wofford's going to get called for a trip. Incidental, but a good call. You get, I think, Klesman. Klesman was trying to help out. And that's kind of inadvertent. Got his foot Yeah, it certainly wasn't, far. It wasn't intentional. But because it impeded Slauson's progress going to the, trying to cut to the hoop, you got to call it. Irvin with the ball in a 10-point lead. Early minutes, second half. Here in Spartanburg, where Foreman hasn't won in 11 years. B.J. Mack is hobbling, missed shot on the other end, and Wofford needs a timeout, and that is not a good sign. B.J. Mack is favoring his right ankle. Oh, this is this could not be a worse picture for the Wofford Terriers right now. Jalen Slauson goes over to ask how B.J. is, but oh, that is the last thing the Terriers want to see. He is the more he gets the closer he gets to the bench the better the limp is look for number 33 in white yeah definitely stepped on, stepped on. Foot. And, right and foot on right foot great sportsmanship by Jalen Slauson as he walked kind of toward the tunnel with BJ making sure he was all right you know mutual respect between those two guys so we'll try to get a report on BJ Mack Sam Godwin has come in so Wofford shorthanded and short on the scoreboard right now, trailing by 10, near steal by Alex Hunter, winds up on the scorer's table. Furman is playing very loose right now, and Wofford is playing very tight right now, and 
over the last decade or so, that has not been what we usually see here in Spartanburg between the two. Again, if you missed it at the outset of the broadcast, Wofford's won six of the last seven between these two teams, 24 of the last 31 as Plesmet dials in a three. And boy, did he need that. First field goal of the night for Max Plesmet, 39-32. He needed it. Wofford needed it. This crowd needed it. Foster to Slauson. Slauson can try to take advantage of Godwin, but now Bothwell can try to drive again on Safford. Again, had a step and again lays it in. Bigelow came over to help an instant too late, and Mike Bothwell now has 10. Again, has struggled in games past against the Terriers, but he's now in double figures. Yeah, and spanning the two halves, he's got Furman's last seven points. Godwin loses the handle, then goes up and can't finish at the rim. Here comes Furman. They want to push the pace off the fast break. Hunter with a three and the biggest lead of the night, tying the biggest lead of the night at 12. Wofford had cut it to seven. Furman has scored the last five. Bothwell taking advantage of a quickness. Then when he got around uh, Safford and then great transition play there by the Paladins. Plasma to Godwin. Sam gets it stripped. Big hands, Conley Garrison. Everything going Furman's way right now. Foster in the lane, and Larson reaches in and commits a foul. Great hands by Garrison down on the other the defensive end as Sam Godwin had position, but when you bring the ball down like he did, and he had to, he had to dribble, you get the uh, guards involved, and Sam brought it down right to where Garrison could get a hand on it and did so cleanly. Austin Patterson checks in for Wofford. That was the first personal foul on Ryan Larson. Third foul of the first three minutes on Wofford. Now Hunter, guarded by Larson, brings it back out. Herman with the ball, a 12-point lead. Double team. Garrison was open momentarily inside. Patterson caught up to him. Now he to Garrison. Seven to shoot. Goes behind the back and loses it. Klesman with the steal. Didn't have the numbers, he'll pull it back out. Wofford has been stealing the ball a bunch lately. Not too many in this game. Both teams actually played, have taken pretty good care of the basketball. And quick hands again. Hunter, they are just pesky. Every time a Wofford big man takes a dribble, there's three guys taking a swipe at it. Here's a good look. And quick hands. And then the hustle by Hunter to die for the loose ball. Corey Tripp checks in for Wofford. J.P. Pegues checks in for Furman. Pegues really gave them a lift in the first half. Eight points off the bench. Didn't miss a shot. Klesman for three. That's too long. Battling is Bigelow when he comes away with it. Did he step on the line? He did. Furman basketball. Wofford's trying to say that Isaiah Bigelow was pushed out of bounds. Jay McCauley wants an answer. Here's another look at it. Bigelow battling. Subtle. Is, did he come back, come down on the line before the push? It's a subtle like enough push that... No, you've seen worse not called. 44-32, been stuck on this score for a couple trips down the floor as we played four minutes here. Second half, Heen has to run it down in the corner. Now six on the shot clock. He's going to put the ball on the floor to reach in foul on Isaiah Bigelow. Timeout on the floor with 15.55 to go. Second half. Wofford on their heels a bit. Furman leads it by 12. Furman leading Wofford 44 to 32 as B.J. Mack is back on the bench. That may be a good sign for the Terriers as you look at B.J. Wofford's really ridden his offense six of nine from the floor. It's the rest of the team. <laughs> That's the problem. It's not doing much offensively. And credit Furman. I think Furman has done a, a really good job defensively as they have all year. This is a, again, this is a veteran Furman team. They start four guys that are either seniors or graduate students. Wofford's still shooting 43% for the field, but Furman's just not looking to get that many shots off. Not a lot of offensive boards. Slauson knocks over Godwin. No call there. They let him play underneath. He playing over Godwin. There was a lot of contact there and no call. 
7-0 run for the Paladins. They lead it by 14. Yeah, Wofford had cut it to seven on the Klesmet three, and since then it's been all Paladins. Larson trying to make quick work of Pegues. Godwin on Slauson. Hesitates, blocked by Slauson. He just waited for Godwin to commit to the shot and swatted it away. Yeah, he, he didn't bite on the head and shoulder fake at all. Five minutes gone by here in this first half, in this second half. The other thing he, I like is that he, he blocked it just softly, enough where he could just grab it himself. Bothwell's three, long rebound, so long that it bounces right to Joe Anderson. Another possession for Furman. They get it nicely to Slauson in the corner. He misses an open three and a foul on Corey Tripp as Garrett Heen pounds the floor after fighting for the offensive rebound. Take another look here. Look at Garen Heen, the sophomore, tap it back out. Tripp got into it with a body. And a good sign for the Wofford Terriers, B.J. Mack returns. That was a scare they had earlier in this half. Yeah, when he, he stepped on Slauson's foot and rolled that angle, a lot of times you just do tape jobs all you need. And Wofford trainer Diane Boyce, I'm sure that's what she did. Look at the move inside, but leaving it short was picky. He's did everything but finish. Mack with the rebound. Yeah, he's got to finish that one. He, they could just start to put the, some serious distance on it. You can't miss those kind of shots. Wofford trying to chip into this 14-point Furman lead. Safford, a good start early offensively. Let's see what Mack can do. Go double move, triple move, lefty move, and he left it short. Just wonder how much that ankle is affecting B.J. Mack as Garrett Heen just left wide open. His corner three, and he lets the bench hear about it. Furman leads it by 17. Wofford hasn't scored in more than four minutes. And now you just, Wofford can't start a, try to start hitting 10 run homers and thinking that they've got to make a three every time down. You just got to run your offense. Jump hook by Mack, can't get a roll. Basket's got a lid on it right now for Wofford. Bothwell, past Klesmit, draws a foul. Second foul on Ryan Larson. A few of the Paladin faithful that made the trip here from Greenville and Traveler's Rest are they're getting loud here in the upper reaches of the Jerry Richardson Indoor Stadium. As Mike Bothwell goes to the free throw line, where he's an 83% shooter and hits the first. It's an 11 0 run now. Garrison back in, Hunter back in. Heen and Pegues have really provided a spark for them tonight. And Anderson, too. Yeah, Anderson as well. Good, good point. I mean, their starters are playing well, and their bench is playing well, too. And it's just, when Furman plays like this, they're in an extreme tough, extremely tough out. Bothwell hits them both. The question for them becomes, in March, can you put it together for three straight days? Yes. Yeah. They have not been able to do over the over the last several years. 1980, the last conference championship for the Paladins as Larson goes underneath and Slauson rejects it again. Here comes Hunter on the fast break. Right wing, Garrison, three, missed it. Offensive rebound, two Paladins were there. Foster got it, and a three on the other end from Bothwell, and the Paladins are loving life right now. Timeout, Jay McCauley, 13-09 to go, second half. Mike Bothwell makes it 54 to 32 Furman. A 15-0 Furman run has blown this one wide open. Furman leads Whopper 54 to 32. And take a look at the points. What was a Kind of an 8, 9, 10-point game late in the first half is not look like that anymore, Tom Hens. Yeah, the 15-0 run, and then Wofford not scoring a bucket uh, over the last five minutes and 15 seconds. And now if you're Wofford, you, you, you can't, you got to chip away at this thing. You can't eat the elephant in one bite, and the elephant is enormous right now, down 22 at home. Mike Bothwell, 15. Jalen Slauson, 12 for Furman right now. 
Furman is playing that they're aggressive right now. They're they're playing tough. They're this is what we're used to seeing from Wofford and the Furman players right now are having a lot of fun as well. Larson inbounds to Mac. Hunter will guard him. Patterson wants Mac wants him to move it to the other side of the floor. Back door not there, so Safford has it on the baseline. He'll go up, find an open Patterson for the corner three, and it swirls in right at the shot clock buzzer. Very patient possession for Wofford. 54-35. The bigger issue now for Wofford is getting stops and rebounds on the defensive end. Fouls also, Wofford's already committed six. So. None for Furman, so the exact same thing we saw in the first half. Yep. Steele, Safford, Klesmit trying to work on Garrison, goes up, misses. Slauson affected that shot by coming back. And a missed opportunity for the Terriers. Right back on the other end, Conley Garrison. D2 transfer from Drury University buries the three and pushes that lead right back to 22. Yeah, that's his first bucket of the night, and it was transition. And again, credit Slauson for that. He he made up a lot of ground trailing the play, but hustled back and uh, and caused that would-be lay-in to, to be missed. Back outside the arc, hands off to Larson. No return pass there. So if Loss, that's a nice entry from Safford to Mac, and he's fouled. Should be immediate timeout. It goes against Marcus Foster. Timeout on the floor with 11.35 to go. It'll be Wofford ball when we come back, but the Terriers in a big hole here at home. Everything going Furman's way here in Spartanburg. Caledon's lead Wofford 57 to 35. You know, Jim Noble, Tom Henson with you. Tom, we talked about who would step up. All the guys who had scored all the points the last couple of years for these two teams in this series were gone. And I think uh, Slauson, Bothwell, Mack, they've all stepped up for their respective teams as we got a foul on the interior against J.P. Pegues of Furman. Yeah, he was holding Ryan Larson. If you're Furman, just keep your foot on the gas here. You know, don't go in a drought. Run your offense. If you're Wofford, you need Furman to go into about a five-minute drought where you outscore him 15-0 to try to get back in this. Mack on Heen. Heen plays good defense. Mack gets rejected by Huey after the offensive rebound, gets it back, and then throws it away. Yeah, I think he tried to throw it off Heen, and it didn't go out of bounds. It just went uh, parallel to the baseline, and Garrison tracked it down. The turnover for Wofford. They're sixth. Furman's played a clean game with only five. Floater off the glass by Alex Hunter. He's in double figures with 10. Larson across the logo here at midcourt. He gets loose in the corner. Pegues gets back in front of him. Now Klesman hit a shot. Thought that might ignite him. Good pass inside. Big load of Mac and blocking foul. Before the shot, got Pegues again. Also Pegues. I wonder if Pegues was just got. No, he wasn't in the circle. He was just late getting over. Bothwell, Anderson back in for Furman. Garrison, Hunter out. Again, I think a concerted effort this year by Bob Ritchie to use his bench a little bit more and not, you know, not. Tired or worn out by the time you get to Asheville for the tournament. We'll see how it works out. Godwin off the pass by Larson. That was a good catch by Godwin. Lays it in with the left hand. I think, yeah, I think there's something to that. I think there's, don't, don't take a, a beat down team to Asheville for the tournament where you're going to have to win three games in three days. Use your bench, and then when you get to Asheville, you can play seven or eight guys and win a tournament if you're, if you're playing well. We've seen that here tonight. Absolutely. Is Papo. Urban could be very, very patient. They could afford to trade buckets with Lopper with the ball with a 22-point lead as we're halfway through the second half. And good hands by Klesman knocked it out of the hands of Pegues. Shot clock violation. And Klesman leads Wofford with 34 steals. Furman's done a nice job, not only taking care of the basketball, but Tom, you mentioned all the assists on all the made baskets so far here tonight. Yeah, they've got an assist on 
67% of their makes. That is outstanding. Bigelow has it as Wofford will do a little three-man weave outside, poked away momentarily by Slauson. That just slows things down for the Terriers getting into their offense already. There's just 10 left on the shot clock as Klesmith tries to take McGeese. Bigelow forced to shoot a three, back iron. Wofford, one and done on that trip. Garrett Heen has really given um, one of those other bench players, given Furman a lift. There's another, Anderson, and Bothwell walked. Got going a little bit before the ball hit the floor. Yeah, got, got both feet going and uh, <laughs> didn't take a dribble yet. Austin Patterson in. Uh, but Furman has built up such a lead, they can afford those kind of mistakes right now. It's not a close game. Again, Wofford swept both games last season between these two teams, including breaking Furman's then 19-game home win streak at Timmins Arena. The two teams will face off later on this year at the big arena in Greenville, Bon Secours Wellness Arena. Last time they did that, it was a classic, a one-point Furman win. As Godwin goes to the floor but keeps dribbling. Looks like Curly Neal of the Globetrotters <laughs> there. Kind of. Klesmith. Now Patterson would tend to shoot. Bothwell on him. Herman just playing very, very That's sound defense. They are in Wofford's face. Klesman loses it. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. That's a pretty heady play by Joe Anderson. Could have picked the ball up and got possession. But then if, if it goes off your hands, yeah. you know, then it's the other team gets it back. He just waited for the clock, shot clock to run out. Yeah, he saw what the, the shot clock was almost done. No reason to touch it. Bring it up. Berman with the ball and a 22-point lead. 8.45 to go, second half here in Spartanburg, where Furman has it won in 11 years, and they've never won in this building. They're eight and a half minutes away from changing all of that. <laughs> Ten on the shot clock. Slauson, shot fake. Godwin stayed there. Deflection, Safford forces the turnover. Larson has it. He wasn't going to go one-on-one -on -one with Slauson, so he dribbles out beyond the arc and hits a three. Ryan Larson, the heady senior. Offer needs about eight more of those. <laughs> <laughs> senior guard from St. Paul, Minnesota. Ball went into the tunnel. Or did it go into the student section I, I and mysteriously know. disappeared? I don't know where it went. I wondered if Wofford was pulling in one of the old Davidson tricks. <laughs> You're not over that yet, are you? Oh, it's a classic move, and they, the, the A-10 is so upset about it because what Davidson does is when a, they score a field goal, they let the ball hit a shoulder or a leg to deflect away and allows them to get back and get their defense set up. And if, uh, if, if the officials never call it say anything about it, it, it works very well. Boswell cross-court to Slauson. He'll throw it back. A long three by Foster, and everything is just going in for the Paladins. Man, Marcus Foster, he's only a 29% three-point shooter. And that one was perfect. That yeah, was pure. He was open. Every time Wofford gets it below 20, Herman gets it back up to 22. That's where it stands right now. 7.35 to go. Larson, shot fake. Hunter didn't go for it, so he had to drop it down to Godwin. Godwin poked away again. Sands put the ball on the floor about three times in this second half and gotten it stripped away. Austin trails, everybody wanted the walk. I don't think he ever possessed the ball. Yeah, I think even the Furman fans were signaling for a walk on that one. <laughs> Gets it back. Now Garrison. He's stripped of the lane, but he got gets it to Foster, and he'll hit one from the other side. Marcus Foster, the sophomore from Atlanta, known for his rebounding, lighted it up from the outside, and it's a 25-point Furman lead. There are guys slipping and sliding everything, everywhere right now. Larson beats Sappy. He'll go up underneath, use the basket as a shield on Bothwell and lay it in. Timeout, Wofford. 6.42 to go. It'll be immediate timeout as well. But the Terriers have a lot of work to do to get back into this one. It has been quite the show by the Furman Paladins here in Spartanburg tonight. Furman leads it 65-42 over arch-rival Wofford as the Paladins have played 
just a smart, heady, but tough ball game, Tom Manson. They've showed fight that I haven't seen for Furman teams in maybe forever. You know, they're, they're playing like a team that knows they have the talent, they know they have the roster, but they also may know that this is it. <laughs> this is their last crack at, at a title for a while because this is a senior heavy team. And, uh, and sometimes teams can just kind of get possessed with it and it works out in their favor. Yeah, Bothwell, Slauson, Hunter especially, the guys that have been there for four or in some cases five years. Hunter. Out top, now Slauson's going to shoot over Mac and just swish it. Has a little salute for the Terrier crowd as well. 68-42. Largest lead, and what as, as well as they've played offensively, I'm more impressed with what they're doing defensively yeah. to, a, to a Wofford team that came in red hot on offense. Wofford had scored 87, 84, and 89 points in their last three games against Sanford, Western Carolina, and the Citadel. Larson's three other side, won't go. There goes Slauson again. He's now got 15 points and five rebounds in limited minutes. Remember, he had two fouls in the first half. Wofford may have also had some fool's gold <laughs> considering who the opponents were. And no, no disrespect, but Furman is much better than those three teams. Bothwell's three was halfway down before that rimmed out. Mack with a rebound. B.J. outside the arc. Slauson making his life difficult. Klesmet. It's only got three points tonight. Mack inside, and he's fouled by Slauson. Give Slauson credit. He played for a long time with two fouls and never picked up that third. Until now, so that's three on Jalen Slauson and give him a little, little shot to the kidneys. Yeah, just knock him off balance a little bit. Garrett Heen comes back in. Bigelow back in, replacing Patterson for Wofford. If you're Bob Ritchie right now, you really, you might be able to just go ahead and, and pull your starters off the floor. Don't want to risk injury or anything like that. B.J. Mack to a cutting Safford. He's tripped. Yeah, Foster with the... And not intentional, it just, just happened, but certainly a foul. Third on Marcus Foster. Five now on the Paladins here in the half. Great pass by B.J. Mack. Offered on the inbound. Furman doing a great job defensively on that. Mack has it as we hit five minutes to play. Backing his way in, kick out Safford. His three drifts off to the right. It was almost halfway down, but a little bit off to the right. Foster brings it up for the Paladins. 26-point lead as Furman's on the verge of going 6-2 and two in conference play. And they're staying in touch with Chattanooga yeah. with, that, with this win. Foster up, draws the foul on Larson, goes to the hole hard. Yeah, Chattanooga held serve. They overcame a tough VMI team in Lexington, Virginia today for a four-point lead. Offord will play the mocks next. And what's going to be a tough road assignment in Chattanooga is to take a look at Marcus Foster's line. Nine points, a very efficient game for him. Four rebounds. And he's at the free throw line. Cannot hit that free throw. Pallet is now four for seven from the line. Hasn't really mattered. Wofford cut this to seven with that Klesman three early in the half. Since then, they've been outscored 29 to 10. Foster will get another. Make it 30 to 10. 69-42. Corey Tripp brings it up for Wofford. Now Godwin. Tripp draws a double team. Wofford, they haven't recognized that double team quick enough and really zip the ball around like they have in the last three games. And, and look, a lot of that, the reason for that is Furman's defense and the ability to recover defensively is Bigelow soars in but can't miss, can't get it in. Godwin's put back, rolls off the rim, but he is fouled by Heed.
Third personal on Heen, sixth team foul on Furman. Sam Godwin will go to the free throw line. For a big man, Sam doesn't get up there a whole lot. 61% free throw shooter. Sophomore out of Moore, Oklahoma. He was on the all SoCon freshman team a year ago. Swishes the first. In fact, Wofford had three members of the SoCon all freshman team last year. Godwin, Max Klesman, Morgan Safford. Godwin hits them both. Such a smooth free throw shooter. He could give pointers to a lot of folks. Four minutes to play. Furman in complete control with a 25-point lead. About to get off the schneid, so to speak, here in Spartanburg. 11 years without a win on Wofford's home courts. Eames three. He banks it in, and that is exactly a picture of what kind of night it's been for the Furman Paladines and Garrett Heen. <laughs> I mean, what, what more can you say? Everything is going in. Furman leads Wofford 72 to 44. Bob Ritchie has done his job, as have his, his Furman Paladins. As Furman leads Wofford 72 to 44. Take a look at those. These two teams were averaging about the same amount of points. Wofford's going to end up probably close to maybe 30 points less than their season average. Corey Tripp has it in the front court. Kick out to Safford. Backdoor Safford. He'll go up and jam it off a nice feed. Wofford's got some work to do just to avoid their season low, which is 54 at UNCG, who I thought coming into tonight was the best defensive team in the league. I, I now don't think they are. I think Furman is. Furman shooting 67% in the second half, 67% in the half from three. Bothwell in the lane. Kick out. Hunter, of course, well, I was sure it was going in. Offensive rebound, Slauson couldn't hold on to it. It should belong to Wofford, and it will. Furman is... I just expect everything to go in. Right 17 now. threes. This is a team that already twice this year has made more than 20 threes. Sam God went out, David Applegrid in for Wofford. I think B.J. Max is done for the night. No risk with him already rolled an ankle earlier. Tripp brings it up, now Bigelow. Patterson holds, deflection, Hunter out of bounds. It'll stay with Wofford with 15 to shoot and 231 on the game clock. So next up for Furman, they'll be home against VMI Wednesday, 7 p.m. That should be a good one, but the way Furman's playing, I don't know if anybody can hang with them, but they play like they did tonight. You see their upcoming schedule for the Paladins. Yeah, a bit of a revenge game in that one for Furman. One, VMI got him earlier this year, and two, VMI didn't make the trip to Greenville last year with a COVID issue. Bigelow's three is short. Good defense in his face by Slauson. We're surprised to see him still in this one with 2.15 to go. Maybe a part right now of letting these guys, these veterans, enjoy it. Could be. Uh, they've earned this win tonight. They've well, done something that some Furman teams haven't done in, in, in over a decade, and that's winning Spartanburg. Hunter off the screen. That one's no good. Bigelow grabs the board, and we're under two minutes to play. Wofford, as we mentioned earlier, they've got to go to Chattanooga to play the number one team in the league, and the Terriers throw it away. And here come the subs for the Paladins. Robert Swanson's in. Herman fans who made the trip, giving their guys a nice ovation. Hunter will bring it up. 72-46. One of the worst home losses Wofford has had in recent memory. Slauson working on Applegrip. Now Foster, he's been effective from the outside. Slauson's going to step back and shoot over the seven-footer. <laughs> and just like that, look at the smile. On Jalen Slauson's face, I think that that picture says it all in terms of how this night has gone for the Furman Paladins. Jalen Slauson, 18 points 
And Furman's going to clear the bench right now, as will Wofford. Teams repasses in. Rhett Lister. Ben Beaker for Furman. Jackson Gore. Jonathan Steelman in for Wofford. And kind of a cathartic game for Furman. They, they, yeah, they, they're they're letting, the, the, letting out a lot of, of, of pent-up emotion after 11 straight losses in Spartanburg. Cleanse the, cleanses the soul, cleanses the palate for them. Patterson fouled on the outside. We'll get Robert Swanson with this one. Swanson, a senior from Myrtle Beach. On both sides, you like to see the... The guys who put in the hours of practice get a little run. Jalen Pugh is also in, the senior for Furman. Austin Patterson will go to the free throw line. So one and one. It's the shooter's roll on the first. He'll get one more. Terriers will likely be saddled with their uh, fewest points scored tonight. 75-48, one minute to play here in Spartanburg. Berman will move to six and two in conference play, 14 and seven overall. Wofford about to fall to 12 and eight overall and have their three-game conference win streak snap. They'll go to four and four. Swanson and Steelman. Jump hook won't go. Offensive rebound by Pugh. Furman will get a new 20 with 30 to go. So for Wofford, you just you go back to the drawing board. I think stepping on the sideline was Pugh and Wofford basketball. If I get a chance to say it, backcourt awareness. <laughs> <laughs> 20. Out of all the things that I thought we were going to finally get to this game, that was not one of them. Yeah, 27 point lead. Bad court awareness. Jay McCauley and company will try to either look at the tape or burn the tape. Beaker called for the foul on I'd, trip. Well, you think you just flush this one? Yeah, it's easy to flush, but I, I'd make them, I might make them watch it. <laughs> I mean, remember, you know, you could. These are two teams that pride both pride themselves on doing the same things harder and tougher than the other guys. Two very good young coaches, Richie and, and McCauley. But it shows you what can happen when one team imposes its will on the other. I think that's exactly what happened. Yeah, here the tonight. toughness. A couple of free throws from Corey Tripp, the freshman from Medina, Ohio, makes it 75 to 50. This is one of these situations where 25 might not indicate how blowout worthy this was as the final seconds tip off and Jay McCauley and Bob Ritchie shake hands at midcourt and the Furman Palace have ended an 11 year nightmare in Spartanburg as they beat the Wofford Terriers 75 to 50. So for Tom Henson, I'm Jim Noble saying so long from Jerry Richardson Indoor Stadium. Furman wins it by 25 points. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Good night, everybody.